In today's video, I'm going to talk about a global campaign to eradicate a disease. I'm going to talk about polio, and this is for the uh, OCR A-level disease dilemma spec, where you need to know strategies for disease eradication at a global level. I'm going to talk about polio, which is a highly infectious, communicable and contagious disease. The way that people get it is that they get um, infectious uh, feces, and people get in contact with that. Uh, and then when those people get in contact with that, they often spread that disease through coughing or sneezing. The water droplets go to another person and infect another person. It's incredibly communicable and contagious. And when people get it, the consequences are very severe. You can get muscle stiffness, um, but at the worst end, you can get paralysis and unfortunately death. Back in the 1950s, uh, this was at a pandemic level and all countries um, would uh, were endemic. It killed or paralyzed nearly 600,000 people a year. By 2021, due to a huge campaign, most of the world is polio free, but there are two endemic countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan, where Nigeria was endemic until very recently and has actually just become polio free in 2020. I'm going to talk about the, the differences between uh, countries like the UK and Pakistan, which, as we can see here, um, UK has nearly 93 and above percent of one year olds that are vaccinated against polo, where somewhere like Pakistan has just simply 75 percent in 2019. In terms of a global campaign, the reason why we went from 125 countries um, in 1988, which is when the global uh, polio er eradication initiative started, um, is because of a couple of organisations. And that is the combined efforts of the World Health Organisation, UNICEF, the Gates Foundation, which is a private org organisation, and the Rotary International Nonprofit NGO. So who took a lead on this? They were in, in imperative in planning, but also um, surveillance. So they looked at where there were polio cases and kept an eye on them and, and realised that they needed to uh, instigate plans and also expertise, what they should do in terms of vac vaccination and logistics. So since 1988, we've got a significant drop in cases and the fact that there are only two endemic places in the world but one of those places unfortunately Pakistan and in 2015 there were still 50 cases that rose to 147 cases in 2019 and is now down to one case which which tells us it's an unstable region it could go up again it could go uh, down again it shows that there's barriers to the the eradication and the fact that if I look at a map of uh, Pakistan I've only shown you the north of Pakistan really here but in the northwest right on the Afghan border, there is a concentration of cases, and that is because of various reasons. Some of those reasons include physical factors. So the fact that in that northwest region, there is an incredibly um, poor infrastructure in terms of roads, and that means it is difficult for organisations, especially vaccination groups um, from UNICEF and such organisations to get there and actually uh, help administer to what is quite a... a a cheap um, oral vaccination. We also have the fact that there is uh, very porous borders here. That means the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan is very loose. It means that any of the nomadic tribes, as we can see here on the left hand side, they can move quite freely across the borders, which means if they do have the disease, the disease between Afghanistan and Pakistan moves quite freely without being stopped. Uh, we can see that that's quite a big issue in the fact that the, one of the only other places in the world where the polio virus is prominent is in Afghanistan. There's also social and cultural barriers. Um, during the time when there was a big push by the World Health Organization and UNICEF to eradicate in Pakistan, some of the religious leaders said that it wasn't haram, which essentially in a large Muslim country means that the actual vaccination was forbidden. It means that the people shouldn't take it because it wasn't in line with Islamic law. This was problematic because it obviously meant lots of people didn't take it and therefore the uh, amount of people that could be vaccinated against disease was reduced. 
Another very significant issue was the political issues. So during the time uh, when Osama bin Laden was hiding in Pakistan, the CIA decided um, to uh, find him by trying to uh, set up fake uh, vaccination centres, which they would try to find him um, and hunt some of his relatives on. Unfortunately, in the long term, this has been an issue is the fact is because when these were found out to be fake vaccination centres, people will actually refuse to go to any vaccination centres, which means that less people were going to vaccination centres because they weren't sure if they were fake or true ones. And therefore, they were less people are getting vaccinated. It even got to a significant issue in the fact that people actually started bombing and putting terror, uh, terrorist attacks on vaccination centres. As we can see in this, um, the city of Quetta, people, 15 people died because people were bombing um, uh, the vaccination centre there. The last issue that we really need to think about in terms of why less people in Pakistan are able to access um, vaccines is the fact that it's a very, very poor area. It's an LIDC, sanitation is low, and so we know that polio is actually um, contracted by the fact that people come in contact, contact with infected faeces, and so if the sanitation systems are poor, then people are always going to be in contact with infected faeces, where in the UK that is very, very unlikely. And so irrelevant of the, uh, of the other barriers, if the sanitation systems are very, very poor, especially in rural communities, then people are more likely to get infected than they would in any other part of the country or the world.